too many injured fingers today. Hey guys, it's Katie. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another recent reads wrap up. It's only Tuesday and we already have two fingers down and it made it really hard to open my energy drink today. But anyway, hi, hello, welcome to my channel. My name is Katie. If you're new here, if not, welcome back. Today we're doing my second recent reads video. I'll link the first one down below if you missed it. Basically, I've started a new thing on my channel where instead of doing a wrap up at the end of each month on what books I read, I'm making one of these videos every five books. So for today, we're talking about six, but we'll get into that. I'm wearing this jacket not because I'm cold, but because I'm so pale that when I didn't have it on, it was throwing off the white balance. <laughs> so yeah, we have a pretty interesting mix of books to talk about today. I'll have them all linked down below in the description. Some of them I loved, some of them I really didn't like, so it's a very mixed bag this time. But I think that's all I have to say for this intro, so let's get straight into the books. So these books I read in the tail end of June and into the beginning of July. So the six books that we will be talking about today, Sound of Stars, City of Girls, The Guest List, Dear Not Special, The Seduction of Molly O'Flaherty, and Girls with Razor Hearts. Almost every single one of these books I gave a different rating to also, so should be interesting. Let's just go in chronological order. So let's start with The Sound of Stars. So this is a young adult science fiction romance novel. And we're following two main characters. One's a human and one is an alien. So basically Earth was invaded by aliens who took over and based on the way that the humans reacted when they first showed up, they're considered to be highly violent and dangerous. So basically they like imprisoned all of the humans. They've banned any kind of artistic expression like music books, anything like that. And so our human main character is constantly breaking the law in order to preserve her personal mini library. So she's like illegally holding onto books and lending them out to other people. And then our alien main character is really into music, which he's not allowed to be. He's not supposed to like feel emotions or anything. So he and the human girl come together and start to bond over their love of the arts. And basically, decide to save the world together. Sounds like it's gonna be a fun time, right? I'm so disappointed because I really wanted to love this book. I also think it had a pretty strong start. It was very promising in the beginning and about halfway through it really started to lose steam for me and it took me forever to finish this book because I just was kind of over it by the middle. For one thing, it's a pretty long book and it felt overly long. Like I don't mind if a book is super long but it doesn't feel long. This felt long to the point where I feel like there was a solid like 100 page section that I would have just straight up cut out. It felt very meandering and unfocused and there were just things that I didn't find interesting and things that just kind of felt repetitive and like it veered off course from where I thought the plot was originally going and not in a good way. The romance itself was cute, wholesome and cute, like I can't complain about that, but the ending um, was not my favorite and I just... This book wasn't it for me. It really missed the mark for me. I'm not rating books on Goodreads. That's a whole separate discussion, but I've been putting ratings in my journal just for my own personal reflection to look back at. And so this one, if I were to give it like an official rating would be like a two and a half out of five stars for me. I think it's one of those cases where I don't necessarily think there's anything wrong with the book. It just wasn't a good fit for me. I listened to the audiobook for this one, so if you're going to give this book a try, I would recommend reading it physically. I feel like the audiobook was probably part of what ruined the experience for me. I think this author is a good writer, so I would definitely try another one of her books in the future, but this one... it wasn't it for me. So I don't want to dwell on the books that I didn't like. Let's move on to the next one, which was City of Girls by Elizabeth Gilbert. And if you follow me on any of my other social media, you're probably very much aware of what I thought of this book. Which, by the way, if you're not already following me on my other social media, they're all linked down below. Elizabeth Gilbert, I actually just attended a virtual author visit with her through my library. I'm obsessed with her. I love her as a person. I love her books. And it's just, this one is one of my new favorites of hers. And she talked about that book in that author visit. And hearing the story behind it made me appreciate it so much more and made me love it even more. So basically City of Girls is about our main character Vivian in New York City in the 1940s. I really liked the narrative structure of it. We're hearing from Vivian when she's like 90 years old and she's telling her story and she's reflecting back on her life from when she was 19 years old and she'd failed out of college and she's like a party girl in New York City all the way through her life. And we start off the book with a letter that Vivian is receiving from this girl saying like my mother has just recently passed away so I was wondering if you would now tell me what you were to my father and so the whole book we're wondering who is this girl's father gonna be because there are so many men who come in and out of Vivian's life she's very promiscuous and having a good time in New York City I'm all about it I'm pro ho and the book I feel like is split pretty distinctly down the middle we do focus I'm sorry if you could hear Max scratching she just got very excited are you done 
What was I saying? Oh yeah, so um, if you're looking at it, now Dean is scratching. <laughs> if you're looking at it structurally, um, the book is a little unbalanced. The whole like first 50% I would say is when she's 19 and a party girl and then the other 50% is like the rest of her life. We do spend a lot of time with her when she's young but I feel like we really need that foundation to understand her character before all of these big changes happen in her life and kind of these formative things that happen to her in her youth that make her to be the way that she is later on. I personally didn't mind that even though I feel like that would be something that I would complain about in a different book. So I loved everything about this book. I loved the setting and being in the 1940s um, in between the wars and I loved Vivian's personality and you see such a transformation for her from when the book starts to when it ends and then there's also that like little underlying mystery of who is this man? Which man is it gonna be and what does he end up being? to Vivian. So yeah, um, this is one of my favorite books that I've read so far this year, five out of five stars. And yeah, the story behind it was just kind of sad. Um, Elizabeth Gilbert's partner passed away a couple of years ago and um, after like a really just horrifying battle with cancer. So it was like a really not good death and she was taking care of her up until the end. And so she wrote this book after her partner passed and everyone kind of assumed that her partner was in this book because of that. And Elizabeth Gilbert was explaining like this was her escape from her grief and so it's purely this fun novel that had nothing to do with any of that so it was just an interesting I just like hearing writers talk about their work and like how books came to be so it was interesting to hear about that after I'd already read the book anyway I would highly recommend this I would highly recommend all of Elizabeth Gilbert's books I really like them this one also I listened to an audiobook fantastic audiobook. Next we have The Guest List by Lucy Foley. This was our book club pick for June. I run a book club over my Patreon. I'll have a link down below if you're interested. So there's also a reading vlog on my Patreon full of spoilers for this book. And unfortunately I was also disappointed by this one. This is an adult thriller and that's my favorite genre. And the description of this made it sound like it was going to be like exactly my taste. And it wasn't. I didn't hate this book whatsoever but it was definitely a letdown and I feel like it had a lot of missed potential. If I take this off is it going to be that big of a problem? I think we're okay. So what did I end up giving the guest list? Three and a half stars. So the premise is there's this wedding on a remote island and a murder happens at the wedding and we don't know who is going to get murdered and everyone on the guest list has a motive so we don't know who's going to do the murdering. And so we're going back and forth between a couple of different point of views and then also the night like when the murder is found and then also like all of the events leading up to it and they're on this remote island. There's a big storm happening. So this sounded like it was going to be everything that I love in books. I thought it was going to be creepy and atmospheric and maybe have like a psychological tilt to it. And I love murder mysteries. I love books that keep me guessing and theorizing and trying to figure out who's going to die and who's going to kill them. And this book, in a word, this book just felt very formulaic, I guess. Like everything that should happen happened exactly where it was supposed to happen. But like there wasn't much else to it. it kind of felt like a bare bones story like I really just wish she had played more into the setting and made it creepier and made it more atmospheric I feel like that was a really big missed opportunity um and then also the person who gets murdered obviously I'm not going to spoil you but it was almost like convenient the way that that person had screwed over everyone else at this wedding and like everyone had a reason to want that person dead like it was almost like too much to believe like oh so that person did this and this and this oh wait and this and this it was just like another thing kept getting tacked on and I was just like does this person do anything other than ruin other people's lives and then despite all of the different point of view characters I feel like for one thing I found most of the characters if not all of them to be unlikable which isn't usually a problem for me. I don't mind reading books about unlikable characters, but they were also like underdeveloped and unlikable. There were two characters in here that I liked and that's it. Actually, that kept me reading because I was really nervous that one of the characters that I actually liked was going to get murdered. But yeah, basically to sum it up, I wish we had played more into the setting and got more of a spooky atmospheric read. I wish we'd gotten more character development and yeah, I wish it was a little less formulaic and a little less outlandish. Although there were a couple of twists at the end that I did not see coming at all and I really liked those and that redeemed it a little bit for me but overall again of all the thrillers I've read this one's not going to be one I'm going to go on recommending. However like I said this was our book club pick and a lot of people in the book club felt the same way I did honestly but some people really really liked it too. Okay those are all the books that we read in June moving on to 
July. First we have You're Not Special by Megan Rinks. This is a YouTuber, if you don't know her. She also runs the podcast Don't Blame Me and she's been in a couple of TV shows, movies. She's an actress and I've been following her since I was a teenager so I was really excited to pick up her book. It's sort of part memoir, part self-help and yeah I really enjoyed this book just because I like her as a person so it was an interesting read for me. I definitely liked the memoir parts of it more than like the self-help her giving advice parts so the beginning was a little bit slow for me. Once we got about halfway through I got really into it. She talks about struggles with anxiety and depression. She talks about therapy, these issues she's had with her family and so I just thought there was a lot of deeper, more relatable material than I think you would expect going into a YouTuber book. So I wouldn't just automatically write it off because it's a book by a YouTuber. I still really enjoyed it. Um, she narrated her audiobook herself so that's how I read it and I would encourage you to read it that way. And if you don't already follow her, her podcast is called Don't Blame Me and it's an advice podcast and I tune in every week. I really enjoy it. So yeah, I gave this one a four out of five stars. So after that, this was the extra book that I threw in for this video. The Seduction of Molly O'Flaherty. This one's hard to talk about. I don't remember what video I talked about this in. This is a short story prequel to a companion series. Something I did not realize when I picked it up. It was just free on Kindle so I grabbed it because I recognized the author, Sierra Simone. So basically there's a first series, I think it's called something Ivy Lavold and it's a period piece and then there's this prequel to the companion series something Molly O'Flaherty. And so this middle thing is a short story, basically just a sex scene between Molly and this other guy who I think are characters who were introduced in the first series and I think they go on to be important in the second series. So basically it's a prequel to the second series. So I was reading it and I was confused and then after I read it I realized what it was and it made sense. So maybe I'll go back and read the two series that this relates to so it'll make some more sense for me. But I enjoy Sierra Simone's writing style. I think she has a really strong writing style but I really don't know how to write this because it was literally just like 25 pages of two characters that I didn't know having sex. So I just gave it a middle rating three stars. So then the final book for us to talk about today is Girls with Razor Hearts by Suzanne Young. I've been meaning to read this since it came out. This is the sequel to Girls with Sharp Sticks which was one of my favorite books that I read last year. This is a young adult I don't even know what genre to call this. Um, it's kind of a combination of Westworld and The Handmaid's Tale and there's not a whole lot that I can say about it without spoiling it. Basically the first book is about this private school that's kind of secluded and in the middle of nowhere and it's very mysterious. Like the surrounding towns, like people don't really know what happens at this school and the school itself is kind of like a finishing school for girls, teaching them how to be proper young ladies and man have manners and all that kind of stuff. But there's clearly something kind of off about this school and the girls inside of the school are weirdly complacent. Like it's clear that something is not right about this school but to the girls it's not clear. So it's weird that it's not clear to them. So yeah, I really enjoyed the first book. Gave it a five out of five stars. This one I don't know if it's because I waited so long in between reading the books that I didn't like it as much because I didn't remember some of the characters and stuff but I also just feel like this one was kind of all over the place and I know it's set up for a third book so I feel like it's just kind of suffering from that like middle book syndrome where it just kind of slumps. I almost feel like it just like was again kind of unfocused and just tried to do a couple of different storylines but also not that much happened in this book when I think back on it. So that spark that the first book had for me that just made me absolutely love it, it wasn't there with the second book. There, so there's nothing like technically wrong with this book. I just suddenly I didn't care about the characters as much. It wasn't as interesting without that Oh that was a spoiler. I'll cut that out. Um, it wasn't as interesting for reasons I can't say. The romance was more of a focus in this book and that was my least favorite part of the first book. So yeah this was just kind of underwhelming for me and it almost makes me think that this shouldn't have been a series and it should have just been the first book. So yeah I gave it a three out of five stars. I might still read the next book in the series and I still would recommend the first book but I found this one kind of underwhelming and I may have liked it more if I had read them back to back. That's how I prefer to read my series anyway so I'm kind of regretting not doing that but I still don't think, I don't know, I don't know what I was expecting from the sequel based on where the first book left off but it wasn't this. However, I love what these books are trying to do. They're very feminist, girl power, girl standing up for girls. If you're not part of the solution, you're part of the problem. Very centered in female friendships, like I love all of that but the plot 
and this one was lacking for me. So yeah, those are the five slash six books that I've read most recently. I'll have them all linked down below in the description if you want to go check them out. And I would love to hear about what you guys have been reading lately, especially if you've read something good. I feel like the reason why it took me so long to get through these next five books is because so many of them I didn't really mesh with. So hopefully my next five books we can get through quickly if I can find some good ones. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. If you're new here, maybe subscribe and stick around. I'll have links for all my stuff down below in the description. My novel, The Anti-Virginity Pact, came out last month if you want to pick up a copy. And my book, Poems for the End of the World, is coming out in October. ARC copies are currently going out right now. I'll have more information on that in my newsletter if you want to sign up. My website is down below. I'm so excited for poems to come out. I'm so excited. So I'll just see you guys in another video very, very soon. Bye. So hit me. So hit me. First a confession. With you, I feel a connection. With